Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I have two videos for you today. Both are about Ripple and XRP, but I decided to break them up because I wanted to go into a little bit uh, more depth in each uh, topic. And if I combined them, it would have just been too long to watch. So the first bit of information is coming out of the SBI camp. This is SBI Holdings, largest shareholder of Ripple, and also one of the biggest um, supporters of the digital asset XRP. And yesterday, uh, Mr. Kitao announced that the Michinoku Bank will begin handling SBI's Remit International Money Transfer Service. So this service is a little different than MoneyTap. MoneyTap, which runs on Ripple, is right now currently only domestic. SBI Remit is all about international remittances. This is a deal that is to target the foreign workers living here in Japan and sending money home. Now the um, Remit, the SBI Remit works with both RippleNet, as we know that corridor between Vietnam and Japan is open on SBI Remit and it's running on Ripple, but it also uses MoneyGram to do its uh, transfers. And so when we take a look at the region that this is going to serve, here we have a picture of the deal being done with the representative and director of uh, SBI, Nobu Ando. And then there is uh, the bank director of Michinoku. This is uh, Takayuki Fujisawa-san. And they are, um, yeah, I think they have a struck a good deal here. They're they're headquartered up in the north region of Japan called Aomori, which means the Blue Forest. And they have a branch as south as Tokyo, and then it stretches all through the north Tohoku region, which is very rich in farming and very rich for the fishing industry, all the way to Hokkaido. Uh, there is a branch in Hong Kong. There are two branches in China and also three in Russia. Reason why is because the north of Japan, especially the city of Hakodate, they have a special relationship with uh, Russians that come to visit. It has 1.8 trillion or approximately 16 billion in assets. They employ 1,200 people. There's 111 branches and it uh, traces its origins all the way back to 1894. So it's a bank that's quite established. And if we take a look at the release, I just want to show you here that it is uh, Mr. Kitao's mission to provide financial services centered on remittance to foreign residents, actively adopting new financial technology such as remittance using Ripple's distributed ledger technology. So I think we are definitely going to see some of that technology used and where well obviously vietnam because that is live and you can see here the foreign workers are mainly the technical interns there's special visas for those technical interns that come to japan to fill the uh, shortages of labor and they are from various countries including vietnam so we know that is a live corridor with RippleNet, and china which will probably use MoneyGram, that is my guess, and then the Philippines, you can see here. There is a need for the hometown remittances, which means this is an outward bound back out of the country to their hometowns. And I think I think you're seeing here, um, there's going to be an announcement of ODL coming very soon with Vietnam. And I don't doubt that Mr. Kitao is gonna join that very liquid corridor with ODL in the Philippines for this deal. That is what I am guessing. So um, the release, since it is targeting those workers, just to give you a little bit of insight as to why there are workers from those countries. Well, it is due to the shortage and these special visas have been created and there was a recent rule change on the 22nd of July. It's going to go into effect. I think um, there are some 32,000. No, 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 no. We've got we've more. OK, 32,000 foreign workers that are in the farming sector. Okay. Now that's not all up in the Tohoku area. That's the, that's a countrywide number, but there are just thousands and thousands of people that are waiting to get back into the country that left because of COVID and they needed to roll back those rules. This is a, 
this is this is the yummy asparagus that comes from that uh, north region. You can see here this is the specified skilled worker uh, visas that were created. It's kind of a it's a it was a new status of residence uh, so that the government could fill those needed positions. And here is Mr. Abe who is. Um, getting that new rule change relaxed. It's uh, to let this, um, let these workers that need to come back in, in. And I think it goes into effect in August. So we'll probably see the workers arrive just before harvest season again, which uh, is a big deal up in this northern area. So this is where Tokyo is, where my mouse is. So there is one branch here, but the majority of those 111 branches are in this region, which is Tohoku. The red portion is Aomori, and then this is the northern uh, island of Hokkaido. And I think when we uh, take a look at what kind of region this is, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know, but this is Aomori. It just gets pummeled every winter with heavy blizzards. It's because it's one of the snowiest major cities on the planet due to these Siberian winds that come across the warmer waters it produces. <laughs> this is like 22 feet of snow. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's enough to bury a two-story home, that is for sure. But the springs and the summers are just glorious. This is a picture of the Hirosaki Castle in Aomori and look at that with the uh, snow covered mountains in the back. It's just beautiful with all the cherry blossoms and coming also from this uh, very agriculturally rich area, you have the famous Aomori apples. Um, this is a big export for Japan, but there's also asparagus and garlic, lots of rice, lots of cherries, and a very serious fishing industry. So those workers are helping get that work done. And this is how artistic Aomori is. They do something very interesting with different varieties of the rice that's grown to create these images in the rice patties themselves and then they build these stands where you can get a little bit higher and view the artwork that's done i just love it this whole region is really artistic i have done a story on the music that comes from this area with the very unique sound of the suguru samisen you can find that on my coil blog uh it's yeah it's really it's my favorite traditional music and all of the music that comes from this country but the rice patties i haven't seen this in person but i think it would be a fun thing to go see now if i um show you the nebuta festival this is their august matsuri which lasts for five days and they build these unbelievably beautiful floats that they take out for the evening strolls for five nights in a row. It's a big, serious competition to see who wins. They are all uh, done with wood and wire. They're two and three stories high. They're just massive and very tall. You can't really see the scale when you look at a picture like this, but I thought this was a good example to show you of the detail that's done. So each one of these is a paper, hand painted paper um, section that is attached to this wire, which is then built on a wood frame. It takes, they as soon as the festival finishes, they take a couple of days off and they start planning and building for the next year. So they basically take one year to build them. And I'll show you another version of that. So you can see this is all individual paper, paper panels. Ah, it's quite something. And unfortunately, I went to the uh, Aomori website and the Nebuta Festival this year has been canceled. It's really a shame. I'm sure we're going to get back on track again. Nobody knows exactly when, but this year the festival is going to pause. And I didn't want to leave you with any bad news. So I wanted to show you something that's fun. And that is a cherry that made its debut from Aomori called the Juno cherry. 
and this is the number one YouTuber in Japan. His name is Hikakin, uh, and he's unboxing one. And you probably don't know what this price equates to in US dollars, but that box of cherries is $3,000. <laughs> I'm not joking, 3000 And you can compare Hikakin to PewDiePie. PewDiePie has a few more um, subscribers, but in terms of views, they're very, very similar. So there is a YouTube video where he unboxed those cherries on the 11th of July. <laughs> he does it in kind of a, yeah, it's not a big production. It is, um, of course, edited and they do add a lot of uh, fun um, effects to the video. So if you want to see the number one YouTuber in Japan and you want to see how his personality is, I think you don't need to speak Japanese. And you can also see the style of um, videos that they do because it is it is quite different than what you see coming out of the West. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. Yeah, so this box, actually it's a little over 3,000 US dollars, but these heart-shaped cherries, well, you know, Japan, they're always a little bit wacky when it comes to food. All right, everybody. Yes, do take care and definitely look for that second video because uh, today's news with the uh, changes in the banking industry being able to custody crypto is really um, a triple. It's not a home run yet. And I'll explain that because uh, we're going to listen to what... Uh, Hester Peirce says in her Senate committee hearing that was held virtually, uh, and it just happened in the last um, day and a half, basically, and um, there's still a little bit of hurdles to get over. So uh, join me on that next video. I'll see you soon. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.